Hi friends, welcome to my channel. This is Amber Michelle and these are all my babies. Starting with Addie. Addie is about to be 18. Mia Claire is 15. Trinity just made 13 and got her braces yesterday. Joshua is 11. Samuel, 8. Stella is 5. Magnolia is almost 3. And, and here is baby Ezra. And this is two. Oh, and Ezra is eight weeks old. Yay. We love you, Ezra. Welcome to my channel. I'm about to give you the raw and real birth story. Today I am doing a birth story vlog for you. And I'm going to tell you all about Ezra's um, induction and birth and how everything went. I want to first say that if you want to see our birth announcement or gender reveal, all of those are in my channel. Um, I have lots of videos uh, of pregnancy updates and even a birth vlog. But this video I wanted to do to tell the details and um, definitely document and say everything that happened. Okay, so first of all, I'm gonna start with um, towards the end of pregnancy, why I was induced in the first place. At my 32 week growth scan, she had told me that um, his head was measuring big, which his head was measuring at uh, 37 weeks, and that was at his 32 week scan. And his stomach was measuring 35 weeks. I was like, oh my gosh, this kid is huge, which I have had one large kid before. So my um, first was tiny, she was 6'9", and I never had another baby that small. My second was eight pounds, and then um, the rest were about seven and a half pounds, except for Samuel, he was number five, and he was nine pounds, six ounces. So um, most of those were inductions, the first two were not. I went into labor for my first two, and um, the rest of them were inductions for different reasons, and so anyway, um, at 32 weeks, we knew that this baby was going to be big, and so she ordered another scan for 37 weeks. And so I could tell by, I wanna say before I was even 30 weeks, I could totally tell that my belly felt full and that I felt maybe that the baby was on the larger side just because I've had a lot of kids and I know how that feels, and so, um, I remember going in and they, because of COVID, they were not doing your fundal uh, measurement at our particular office. So they weren't measuring to see, you know, how your baby was growing or measuring. I guess they were just using the ultrasound instead. So um, she just said, you know, maybe it's your, cause it's your eighth or maybe it is a big baby or whatever. So when we had the 32 week ultrasound, that totally confirmed he was measuring five pounds, four ounces at 32 weeks. So I knew if he gained a half a pound a week um, until he was born, if I went to 40 weeks, that he was gonna be really big. So we knew that. And then at the 37 week ultrasound, um, he was already over seven pounds. He was seven and a half pounds. And most of my babies were seven and a half pounds at um, the last two at 40 weeks were seven and a half pounds. So I was a little bit like, ah, about that. I was thinking, you know, preparing myself, let's say for a big baby. So at 37 weeks, um, she offered to go ahead and schedule an induction for 39 weeks, which fell over a weekend. So I was gonna be 39 and one. And even though I was like, okay, my body has till that time to go into labor, I was totally fine with uh, going with an induction because I was in lots of pain. Um, I had pelvic girdle pain. If you know what that is, you've experienced it, you know what I'm talking about. The burning and feeling like your hips are about to break and your pelvis is on fire. That's totally what I was feeling, having trouble walking, making all the people around me do the bending and leaning over because that was not something that was comfortable in any way, shape or form. Okay, so one of the things I do every morning is laundry 
and that requires pouring out all the clothes and sorting them and y'all by the end um i was getting other people to do it because it was just too hard and that's usually not like me i you know do whatever i need to do i don't mind cleaning and doing all the things but leaning over and picking things up was not good at all okay so let's get started and dive into the big day all right so we knew that if i didn't go into labor by 39 and 1 which was september 28th um that we were going to be induced and like most hospitals what you do is they give you a time to call in the morning and make sure that there's a room for you and that's what i did so we were supposed to call at 4 30 because we were coming in at 5 30. we live a little over 30 minutes away from the hospital um so i knew that i needed to call so we called that morning i had everything packed that is one of the good things about being in induced is there's not the like middle of the night scramble we were able to get everything together and make sure we had um, everything we needed for the baby we were totally prepared for two nights stay um, or more at the hospital i have a um, what i packed for the hospital video and that's also there below on my channel that morning after we called and they said um yes we have a room for you uh that was just the biggest relief that was the biggest relief for me knowing that um we could go and he was going to be born that day i have been induced five times before and i know that my body uh responds really well to pitocin and to being induced and um I've had some go quick and some a little bit longer, but probably none longer than eight hours, six hours, maybe. Got to the hospital um, on a little bit late, actually. We were running a few minutes late. The weather was horrible that day. It was very, very, very muggy and like wet outside. And so um, we were running a few minutes late, got to the hospital. I did not know at that point if I was gonna have to be COVID tested. Yes, that's a blow up turkey. <laughs> Yeah, we're hosting Thanksgiving here in two days um, when I'm filming this video. So I didn't know if we were gonna be COVID tested when we got there, but I did know that we didn't have to wear our masks in the room and my husband was allowed to come and go at our particular hospital. So um, when we got to the hospital, we were just required to wear masks and they got us checked in pretty quickly. I was in my room within just a few minutes and then I had two nurses taking care of us and. Within 30 minutes, um, they have a long list of questions that they ask you and they put your IV in and they did all those things in just a short bit of time. And I felt like the morning was flying already. So I think by the time we got there at 5.30, a little bit after 5.30 got checked in, by 6.30 everything was done and we were um, put on, I was put on my antibiotic, which is the penicillin. Uh, my blood work drawn I had all that done by that time and they had started me on a very low amount of pitocin and i had been contracting on and off for um days maybe weeks and so i could tell that the contractions were starting to pick up um not really strong in pain wise but just more frequent more regular so at that point um i just asked hey you know around what time is my doctor going to be in to see me for the first time that day and she said it was going to be somewhere a little after eight o'clock so from then we just you know i caught up on um social media and chatted with tom and you can see that in the birth vlog that we were just kind of hanging out and um the calm before the storm and so by 8 30 my uh, doctor had come in and she was ready to break my water and i was like okay that means it's the real deal it's like going down when my water is broken and I'm on Pitocin, things get real, really fast. And that's been how it is in the past. And so she broke my water and it was like a flood. It usually is for me. I know that I carry a lot of fluid and uh, I knew that it would probably be a lot. It just, it was a lot. <laughs> and so uh, after a few towels and after being cleaned up a bit, we, we're just um, waiting for things to pick up. And within just a few minutes, my nurse came in. She's like, okay, I'm ordering your epidural. If I was induced, I want an epidural. And if I went into labor naturally, then I was just gonna see how things went. Well, A, this is a big baby. And um, B, I've done it natural twice before. 
and I can tell you there are pros and cons to both and I want you to do what you feel is best for yourself and I did what I felt was best for myself and um, I wanted to be present when Ezra was born and so I chose to have an epidural the only difference is I've had um, let's see five epidurals before it had been eight years since my last epidural and every epidural that I've had I had when I was in a whole lot of pain I mean a lot of pain and um, she had ordered my epidural and was like, he's ready whenever you are. There's one across the hall that's uh, ready. Do you want to go first or second? And I was a little nervous because I wasn't in pain yet. And so I said, I'll go second. And um, I asked her how long and she said about 20 minutes. That was not long to me. It didn't really make a difference because I wasn't in much more pain. But the last couple of contractions before um, the anesthesiologist came in, were definitely more intense and so I knew that the game was getting started and I did not want to miss my chance to have my epidural so he came in and without me being in crazy pain so normally the way it would go is um, I'm in so much pain I ask for my epidural and I can barely sit on the bed because I am in that much pain <laughs> my contractions you know are just there um, some of them I've even had the epidural during transition. So I was only four centimeters before my epidural, I believe. And uh, they had checked me when she broke my water. And uh, he came in, he set everything up, he took his time. And the one of the cool things is I was holding Tommy's hand. He was allowed to, be, to stay in the room with me. Um, and he's sitting right in front of me and I'm holding his hands. And he's like, you okay, you okay? I'm like, yes and just trying to calm my nerves and then when he goes in and he's like you know the big stick which is just the the first and then you really don't feel anything after um i was just like ow 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 and i held it together and i didn't jump and after that literally the next you know five to ten minutes um to fully put in everything was amazing he did such a good job like i didn't feel anything nothing crazy happened it all went really smooth and so when I was when he was done he was cleaning up and I just said thank you so much I said you did such a fantastic job I said I've had multiple epidurals before and I've had some good and I've had some um not great and that was due to just a very rude anesthesiologist um and I just told him how good of a job he did and he looked at Tommy and I and he was like we never ever get thank you he said you know i think it just really took him off guard because they usually get chewed out or screamed at or you know the the woman's upset because it didn't it she felt it or what for whatever reason um they don't get a lot of thank yous and appreciation and i was very thankful that a it went good he took his time he did a fantastic job and b that I was going to get to experience this labor and delivery and be present to see my baby be born. After the epidural, I was put on my right side. And if you've had an epidural, you know, they put you on one side and then um, a few minutes later, they'll switch. That way the epidural can get into um, both sides of your body. So I was on my right side and everything was feeling great. All those familiar feelings of um, what the epidural does to your body all of that was coming back and I was just like, this is the best labor ever. After my epidural, she checked me and I was five centimeters. Within a few minutes, I would say 15 to 20 minutes at the most, um, I told her that I was starting to feel something on my left side and it was hurting in the one, one region. And so she said, well, let's turn you over to your other side. At this point, I wasn't um, shaking or feeling really anything except that localized area. So she laid me on my left side and when she did, um, I started to feel some pain and I was like, okay, I think I wanna go back to my right side. I was able to press a button up to four times an hour. So I pressed the button once, um, within a few minutes, she came back in, rolled me over and I began to shake. And I wasn't having that localized pain anymore once she had rolled me over to my right side. Um, I guess it had reached everywhere it needed to reach to fully numb um, my body. After 
she had rolled me back on my right side and everything was okay. I had started to shake and I have had this happen before. A lot of women do. I know it's a reaction um, to the epidural, but I felt it was also a reaction to my body going into transition. So I paged my nurse. She came in and this is maybe 45 minutes after I had my epidural. And remember I was five centimeters. So she comes back in. She says, let's press the button. She checks everything and I'm really starting to shake and I could feel that things were moving fast. Um, I just knew and I felt what my body was doing and I knew that I was definitely progressing. So she came and checked me and she's like, oh yeah, you're eight to nine. And that had happened in a matter of 20, 30 minutes. And so she said, let's get you on the peanut ball, which I had done without an epidural and I have PTSD from that peanut ball, but it works. It's just, if you don't have an epidural, it's super painful because it makes things open up in a way that the baby's head is really coming down um, quickly and is not always the most comfortable thing, but with an epidural, okay, give me the peanut ball. So she only had this extra large peanut ball. I'm 5'8", I have long legs, swung my leg over that thing and um, definitely knew that it would only be a few minutes. And so after maybe 10 minutes on the peanut ball, I, um, I called her again and I said, I think you need to check me. Um, I was really feeling like the baby was there. And so she did check me. I was fully dilated and I just kind of began to get emotional. Um, that's how it started in the video of the birth vlog. You only see me crying with the baby, but I was crying from the minute that I knew it was time to push the baby out. Uh, so at that point, I wasn't sure if he was going to be big or not with all that fluid that had left my body, my stomach had went down a lot, but he was also descending. So I just wasn't sure. I just knew, um, from the ultrasound that he had hair. If you watch that video of his 32 week ultrasound, uh, he had his little hair floating in the ultrasound and it was cute. So I knew that I'd taken collagen, uh, with my coffee, most of my pregnancy for my own hair growth and hair health and body health. And so I wasn't even thinking as a side effect that he would have a lot of hair. Most of our children don't. Me and my brother were born with tons. Tommy and his sisters were born bald. So all of our kids have kind of been in between that. Um, but Ezra was definitely born with the most hair of all of our children. And in saying that, she um, got the bed broken down, got my legs up and we were both able to see because she had previously put the mirror in for me. I told her I always like to have the mirror. It helps me with my pushing and knowing, um, especially with an epidural, where to push and to see what's going on. That's just the kind of person I am. Um, so people probably wouldn't want to see that. That's what I want to see and experience it from um, that view and that angle. And so when uh, she had my legs up in stirrups, she said, look, we can see the hair and like, so we saw the top of his head and that's when the tears really started flowing. It was less than five minutes. My doctor was in the room. She was getting her stuff on in about a minute. She turns around and she's like, Oh, you're having a moment. And I'm like, I'm having a moment. I was just bawling. I was crying and I was just overwhelmed with emotion. It was, um, I think it's so different. There was so much fear and anxiety with my first baby and not like, all bad it's just you don't know until you know and so um a lot of it I just didn't know anything and now just knowing and having peace and knowing how everything goes it was such an enjoyable and wonderful process um the nurses that I had were fantastic my doctor is always amazing this is my third that she delivered and she is so wonderful and the hospital's great. Um, the only negatives really were COVID and the fact that my children and my mom were not allowed to be there, which was very hard, but we were able to FaceTime. So uh, we had taken Tommy's phone and we taped it up to like a shelving unit to watch, you know, from like a head view um, as if they were behind us so that they could see when he was born and everything that happened. And so they had a big group of people here at my house watching this whole process go down and were able to kind of experience it with us, even though, of course, I would have wished that they were there and with us, but this was definitely the next best thing. 
So my doctor turns around and I'm crying and she's like, are you ready? Do you need a minute? And I'm like, I'm totally ready as I'm crying. And it, I don't know, just saying that even made me more emotional. So I say this not jokingly, I cried the baby out. And so I guess as I was kind of crying, I gave like little half pushes and within a, a few seconds, his head was out and just seeing his like, perfect head all I could imagine is that his face was going to be smashed because in his ultrasound the 37 week she couldn't get a good picture of his face she said he was so low and his face was all squished in there I just didn't know if he was gonna like look crazy and his face was gonna be smashed these things we imagine when we're pregnant is ridiculous but um, he came out his head came out and it was just perfect and it wasn't coned it was round and it was perfect and he had all of this dark like black hair and started crying even before he was fully delivered she said okay one more good push and with some crying and half pushing the rest of him was out now immediately she says oh he's a big one <laughs> and I couldn't tell because a I'm not holding him yet and b I haven't held a baby in three years you know not one of mine not a newborn and so to me he just looks small but he wasn't and she knew that because she delivers babies every single day so they knew oh he's a big baby she put him on my chest and that's the moment that tommy started recording and you saw all of that in the birth vlog and he was crying immediately he was pink his apgar was nine nine he was um perfect and i just couldn't help looking at him his eyes were tiny and they were like glued shut with uh with vernix and his he was full of vernix super fat healthy he had a three vessel cord a big old fat uh umbilical cord which is always good he was obviously getting all the nutrients that he needed because he was a big one and mwah, perfect i just love that baby to death so we snuggled we cried we snuggled and showed the baby off via facetime and were able to just share that moment. Um, we kept him for about an hour before they came in and just kind of weighed him in our room, of course. And that's when we found out he was nine pounds, five ounces, just one ounce less than Samuel. And probably if he wouldn't have peed as soon as he came out, he would have been the same. They mimicked each other in their birth weight and their head size um, and in their length by very, very close. I mean, it was almost identical. He even looked like Samuel when he came out. Of, of our children, of all of our children, he looks like Mia and Samuel. And now that he's eight weeks old, he really looks a lot more like Mia than Sam. Sam's face was kind of round and big this way, and Ezra's a little more like um, narrow in the face. He has beautiful brown eyes and brown hair that mostly goes into a little mohawk and um, is like really fuzzy in the back. And everybody has just kissed him to death a thousand million times. We love this little baby. All right, so after that, um, with Magnolia, I had a small tear that required a couple of stitches. And this time I was just waiting a second and um, just enjoying Ezra. And she said, basically it looks like a little brush burn. I'm gonna hold my rag here for a minute. So I didn't need any stitches. Can you hear my kids? Um, or anything like that. And I was very grateful because the healing process is usually easier and faster. Uh, also, another tip is I don't take any narcotics. So a lot of doctors will just prescribe a narcotic and ibuprofen after for pain relief. And I've noticed over the past two babies that if I don't take the narcotics, I have way, way less to no postpartum depression at all. So that's just my experience. And so I chose not to take that. Now, I did regret that decision for just a couple of hours in the middle of the night when, um, if you can only have your ibuprofen for every six hours, I was hurting pretty bad in the middle of the night. But besides that, I wouldn't change that decision. Uh, so once she knew there was no tearing, she delivered the placenta, everything went well and um, as it should. And within a couple of hours, they were moving us to our recovery room and there, is where we were taking care of for the next 24 hours. Um, Ezra was checked his hearing. He was born with an ear pit, if you know what that is. Uh, a lot of... 
oh, I'm starting to sweat just thinking about this whole process. No, I'm joking, it's hot in my house. Okay, the next thing that happened was Ezra was born with an ear pit, which if you know what that is, it's just a small little hole, uh, almost looks like a pinhole um, above the ear, kind of towards the face. And what this basically means is they usually check because the ears and the kidneys develop at the same time. He passed his hearing test, so I didn't want to test anything with his kidneys. Everything seemed to be working perfectly fine. And besides that, he is just a big, healthy baby boy. Along with that, he was also born with a Mongolian spot, which two of my children have also been born with a Mongolian spot. It basically looks like a purple bluish bruise is what it looks like, but it's not um, above their tailbone. And Mia and Trinity, both my dark skin, brown hair, brown eyes, kids um, had one. And it's just being of ethnic descent. Uh, Tommy's father is of Spanish descent and there's all kinds of things mixed in there. And that's where that comes from. Ezra has definitely got dark hair, dark eyes, dark skin. He is by far my darkest baby. And um, I have pretty much half and half the blue eye, brown eye, uh, blonde hair and brown haired babies. Some are fair and burn and some get so dark you wouldn't even believe it in the summer. Um, when they take their bathing suit off, it looks like they have a skin bathing suit on. They are cuties and I love them. And so at the 24 hour mark, I was expecting that we'd be staying the full 36 hours for Ezra's blood to be tested because I was group B positive. And that didn't happen. So Ezra, um, his pediatrician said, go home. And I was nervous. I wasn't sure if I wanted to go home in a way just because being there, you're taking care of, you know that you're being um, fed and you're not having to do a bunch of things. And at home, I just feel, um, even though Tommy takes good care of me and the kids help a whole lot, I feel the need to go back to normal and do things like I would normally do at home. And so it ended up being such a blessing. The kids wanted to meet him so bad. And my parents were here with uh, the kids who were home and it was just a really good thing that we were able to come home after just one day and everything with me was released and fine everything with him was released and fine and we were um released the next day around i want to say like 1 30 2 o'clock we were able to come home and it ended up being a gorgeous day we came home and i also have that in my birth vlog of the kids meeting their brother for the first time and they all thought that he was so huge and so big because on camera babies just look bigger so if you watch the birth vlog and you think he looks massive in person he really looked tiny um and so when they met him for the first time they were like he's so small he's so little and just loved on him and he has been a huge blessing he does not sleep the best during the day but at night he is sleeping fantastic I couldn't ask for better. The outlet has changed my life. I love the outlet. Um, just one more way of having a peace of mind that he's safe and doing well as he sleeps at night. Uh, this is my eighth baby. And from the first to now, just all of the things that they have just blows my mind that makes mommyhood and raising babies so much easier. Oh my goodness, I can't even imagine how our parents were you know my mom tells me about their breast pumps and all the things that they had we have it so good and I'm so thankful and so um, as of now all of my healing has gone well I was released at six weeks from my doctor and then um, right after that I had the Paraguard IUD put in and that's just what we chose to do at this point. My birthday in March, um, coming up, I'm going to be 40. And I'm really gonna pray and just trust God what he has for us next and believe that what he has is best. So I want to say this, when Ezra was born, when he was delivered, there was such, the tears were not just tears of joy and they were, but there was such a peace. The Spirit of God was in that delivery room. And Tommy and I have talked about it multiple times after um, we've come home. 
we've talked about it a few times after we've come home and we've even told a few people but it was the most beautiful delivery we couldn't have asked for more or better i always had a piece from the beginning of this pregnancy that this delivery was going to be like a dream delivery and so in my mind i always thought it was going to happen naturally and i was going to go into labor my water was going to break but this is looking back i could not have asked for better or more out of this delivery it was so beautiful it was so quick we just we were literally in shock for a few days of how fast and easy and smooth everything went and then when he was born and the nurses they were just in shock they were like they see this and do this every day but there was just such a peace and a a joy of his birth it was it was really a beautiful thing to see and to experience i would love to see more moms be real about birth and labor and raising babies um i definitely don't think we should sugarcoat motherhood birth or the challenge of motherhood um but i also think we should band together and lift each other up and not shame each other and let each other make decisions for their own lives and their own families. I can just sit, tell you that in these times, if you're scared to have children or to have a baby, let God erase that fear because children are heritage and they're a blessing. They, a lot of times, can make you feel like you want to rip your hair out. And then there are also the sweetest moments that bring tears of joy or tears of love to your eyes. And you just uh, grit your teeth because you love them so much. Being a mom is hard. Being a mom is the best and greatest thing that you'll ever be or experience. And I can only speak for myself in saying that, yes, many times, I ask myself, what am I doing? And many times I look like I was ran over by three Mack trucks. But it's those moments when your heart bursts with joy, when your child does something or surprises you or accomplishes something that they've been trying to accomplish. And now being in every season of motherhood from graduation down to newborn diapers <laughs> um, it is the coolest thing in my personal life to see my older children hold Ezra and love on him and give him all the snuggles um, I cannot say that he won't be the most spoiled baby in the world he probably will be and I'm okay with that moms remember Every season is so short and God can make up for everything that we lack. Wait. And always remember, whatever you're going through, God is always there. Be blessed. Yes. Peace. 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 <laughs> <laughs>